You've probably noticed that there's lots of attention right now on AGI. Many videos with shocking or provocative titles. So, let's define what AGI is, actually, and then we'll look at what's out there and finish up by applying the ultimate test of AGI. First, AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence. Artificial basically means man-made. Now, we can complicate this if we want, asking theoretical questions like, what if someone were to use DNA material as a component in a computer chip? Would that still be artificial? Anyway, as you can see here, there now exists a two nanometer chip that's already smaller than the diameter of human DNA, which is 2.5 nanometers. The only way you can see the process node on this thing is with an electron microscope, like this. To give context, a single human hair is up to about 100,000 nanometers thick. Comparing the width of a human hair to the process node on a 2 nanometer chip is like comparing the height of the Eiffel Tower to the length of a fruit fly. So, I'd say we've got the word artificial covered at this point. The next word is general. What this word tells us is that, by definition, true AGI must be able to address general-purpose problems. So, if we create an application that does a great job of filtering spam from email, for example, that's not AGI, regardless of how well it does that, because it fails the test of being able to apply its intelligence in a general way to various problems. We're looking for a system that's capable of solving problems that were not predefined by developers, exploring uncharted areas, and that's hard. Last is the word intelligence. In this paper, Bon Xu presents the idea that for anything to be defined as intelligent, it must be able to learn and adapt to its environment. If it cannot learn, it's not intelligent, says Bohn, which seems reasonable. By that measure, a human is intelligent. A microbe might be considered intelligent if it can learn and adapt. A calculator is not intelligent. And something we create out of silicon and computer code might be intelligent if it can learn and adapt. For humans, how do we know that we have learned and adapted? One good indication is if our environment is more or less stable, then our performance should improve over time, even if we have incomplete information, and even if no one intervenes. So, for AGI to be intelligent, it needs to work like that. Here's some code for a regression model. The code calculates a best fit line for Y very quickly, using the variables provided, and it produces different kinds of scores for that. But in the end, someone has to take a decision about which model to use out of several that might have been considered. That's human intervention, so that fails this definition. Also, this is specifically a regression model, so it fails the test of being general as well. And that's kind of it. But there's another concept that we should mention briefly. 
Back in 1980, philosopher John Searle coined the term strong AI to refer to AI that has developed consciousness. Basically, it's like the definition of AGI that we created just now, plus the idea that the AI is conscious of itself, possibly including emotions. Now, in fairness, Searle coined that term in order to tag the idea as invalid, using his famous Chinese room argument. Anyway, all those kinds of philosophical questions are out of scope. Most of us just merely look at how AI behaves, what it actually does. So we can summarize in this way. AGI is something man-made that can learn and adapt while addressing general purpose problems, even without complete information, and even if no one intervenes. Okay, does that exist now? Here's some information that points in the direction of a yes answer. You can see here that DeepMind has developed Gato, which can perform more than 600 different kinds of tasks. That certainly sounds like it's general in nature. And we've all seen demos of large language models listening to spoken language, understanding the context, and correctly reproducing the same idea in another language. And we know that these same models can summarize the key points as well. That sounds very close to AGI. Here's a study that was published by Stanford last month. As you can see here, large language models are now outperforming the human baseline on key benchmarks for reading comprehension and visual reasoning. And beyond comprehension, already last year, you can see this study reported that GPT-4 had outperformed 99% of humans on the well-known Torrance test of creative thinking. So, all these things point towards a yes answer, either already now or in the near future. But here's the ultimate test. It's the Wozniak coffee test, and it goes like this. A machine is required to enter an average American home, find the coffee machine, find the coffee, add water, find a mug, and brew the coffee by pushing the correct buttons. My friends, I am very sorry to report that this task has not yet been completed, and that's a big gap for AI. Conclusion, no AGI yet. So let's all double down our efforts, because this is a big issue for multiple reasons, some of which you can see here. Okay, guys, let me know when you pass the Wozniak coffee test, and then we can talk. Meanwhile, thanks for watching, and see you next time.